And in Georgia tonight, another dead heat. Senator Raphael Warnock and his Republican challenger, Herschel Walker, they are neck and neck as well. Senator Warnock and what he said today about Herschel Walker. And Walker right here tonight making his own closing argument. ABC's Steve Osinsami from Atlanta now. On one of his final stops of his bus tour across the state, U.S. Senator Raphael Warnock was in Macon, Georgia today, making his closing argument with voters, saying that his opponent isn't ready to go to Washington. Herschel Walker is neither ready nor fit to represent the people of Georgia in the United States Senate. More than 2.5 million Georgians have already voted. Close to 2 million more are expected to vote tomorrow. And polls suggest that the U.S. Senate race here is one of the closest in the country, despite or in spite of months of bad press for Republican Herschel Walker, who opposes abortion rights and has had two women come forward saying that he paid for their abortions. And about the Herschel, there's a hole. Walker is famous here for his college football days at the University of Georgia. And during the school's big game this weekend, where UGA won. One more snap, and Georgia goes to 9 0. Both candidates spent more than $100,000 each airing ads. So I'm going to tell Senator Warnock, don't let that door hit you in the bite side as you walk out of that room. That room don't belong to you, sir. That room belongs to the people. Walker's ticket mate, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, was on a plane today flying to voters and arguing that he's a better choice than Democrat Stacey Abrams. Everyone from the top of the Republican ticket, except for Herschel Walker, was on the governor's plane. Walker has been endorsed by former President Trump. Governor Brian Kemp has not. Steve Osinsami joins us from Atlanta tonight. Steve, officials I know there are preparing, and I know people at home don't want to hear this, but they are preparing for the strong possibility that Georgia, the Senate race, if neither candidate gets 50 percent, this could then head to a runoff? That's right, David. You know, you need 50 percent or more to win a race in Georgia. And because there's a third party candidate in that U.S. Senate race and the polls showing the race so tight between the two major campaigns, the two major campaigns are preparing for a runoff four weeks from tomorrow. And that divide that we're seeing between what you might call the Kemp Republicans and the Trump Republicans is being downplayed a bit on the right. But it is something interesting to watch if this heads into a runoff, as many expect. David. All eyes on Georgia. Georgia on my mind. Steve Osinsamu, you'll be here tomorrow night for election night with us all night long. Thank you, Steve. I want to get right over to the big boards tonight. Our political director, Rick Klein, Rachel Scott, who covers Congress, both with us here. Uh, Rick, you're a veteran at this. Normally behind the scenes for years. Tonight, we're going to put you right in front of the camera and straight through election night. First, the three states that you have been saying to watch very closely on election night, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Nevada. Yeah, these are your big three. You've got Georgia, which is now controlled by Democrats. Pennsylvania, now by Republicans, where uh, Dr. Oz and federal are squaring off and out in Nevada. That's probably Republicans' best pickup opportunity. David, whoever wins two out of those three states is almost certainly going to win control of the United States Senate. And in Nevada, that's Catherine Cortez Masto, right. largely believed to be the most endangered or one of the most endangered Democratic senators. That's exactly right. Let's look at the numbers in each one of these states to show our viewers at home just how close each one of these Senate races is. Yeah, starting with Georgia, I mean, this, this has gotten tighter somehow after the recent revelations. And as we just heard from Steve, you're running not just against each other, but against 50 percent. Someone has to top that number. And you've seen Herschel Walker overtake Rock Raphael Warnock just slightly in the 538 Pennsylvania polls. tonight. Pennsylvania, another one. Look, it does, you cannot get a race any tighter than this. We saw that debate performance a couple weeks ago. It seems like it has tightened it, and that is just absolutely neck and neck. But just a few seconds left for the board. Nevada tonight. Yeah, Nevada is a place where the Democrat, Catherine Cortez Masto, has been trailing rather consistently. As you said, David, probably the best opportunity for the Republicans, and it's going to be a late night out there. Yeah, this is going to be the ground game, all about the ground game in Nevada. Rick, thank you. You'll be here all night long. Rachel Scott with us again tonight uh, from Washington. And this is the historical context of all of this. A president in the White House, the party in the White House usually faces a very difficult midterm. And David, we went back in history to look at how former presidents fared in their first midterm election. So let's start in 2010. Former President Barack Obama, his approval rating was at 40, 40 percent. He lost 63 uh, Democratic seats in the House. Called it a shellacking. He called it a shellacking. <laughs> he called it humbling. In 2018, former President Donald Trump, his approving sat at 40% lost 40 seats in the House. It will be up to voters to decide whether Democrats gain or lose seats now, but President Biden's approval rating is sitting right around where Donald Trump's was in 2018. And again, the Republicans need just five seats, a net gain of five to take back control. Rachel Scott will be here with us all night long, too. Thanks to you both. Uh, by the way, they're just part of the team. The entire team will be in this studio this time tomorrow night. John Carl, Cecilia Vega, uh, Lindsey Davis, Martha Raddatz will all be here in our election headquarters and all across the country, live in each one of the battles. 
battlegrounds. Our live coverage all night long. We begin at 8 p.m. Eastern on the network, and as the first results come in, we'll have them for you. We're going to be here all night to guide you through it. Expect the unexpected. There are always surprises. Again, tomorrow night, ABC News, the team right here with you all night long. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.